I am hopeful that uh, the discussions that Senate, uh, Secretary Kerry have with uh, uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov, as well as uh, some of the other players in this, uh, can yield a concrete result. When we see that the U.S. really wants stability in our region and will stop threatening and aiming to attack and stop supplying weapons to terrorists, then we will consider the process can be brought to the final stage and it will become real and acceptable to Syria. The latest developments on Syria as this diplomatic effort continues, Secretary of State uh, John Kerry in Geneva. Also today, the Russian president writing an op-ed in the New York Times in it uh, saying what Russia wants to see and also adding this, quote, I would rather disagree with a case he, President Obama, made on American exceptionalism, stating that the United States policy is, quote, what makes America different, it's what makes us exceptional. It is extremely dangerous to encourage people to see themselves as exceptional, whatever the motivation. There are big countries and small countries, rich and poor, those with long democratic traditions and those still finding their way to democracy, their policies differ too. We are all different, but when we ask for the Lord's blessings, we must not forget that God created us equal. That has brought some interesting reaction here in Washington. Let's bring in our panel. John Hilsenrath, Chief Economics Correspondent at The Wall Street Journal. Juan Williams, columnist with The Hill, and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. What about this, Charles? President Putin in this op-ed in The New York Times. Well, these are the fruits of a completely incompetent, epically incompetent foreign policy diplomacy by Obama. Here is the president of the greatest democracy on earth being lectured insultingly, really, uh, in an American newspaper about human rights, about uh, international law, about the protection of the elderly and children in wartime. I mean, the chutzpah of writing that but by a KGB thug whose last adventure in the world was to invade Georgia, detach uh, two of its provinces and declare them independent, and who for the last decade has been supplying Assad, whom we are essentially calling a war criminal, with uh, huge amounts of weaponry, including the elements of poison gas. I mean, this, what we're seeing here is Putin so confident of himself after Obama had to acquiesce to this face-saving negotiation that he could actually engage in this. It's an index of how uh, sort of he, Obama has been played and continues to be right now in Geneva. Well, and here's uh, just some of the reaction from the White House and up on Capitol Hill to Putin's op-ed. The fact is that Russia offers a stark contrast that demonstrates why America is exceptional. Unlike Russia, the United States stands up for democratic values and human rights in our own country and around the world. I look at this and I can't believe that we're, this is taking place. To be lectured to by Putin as we were this morning, it just, uh, it's, it's, you know, I can just hear Reagan rolling over in his grave. Thoughts on all this? I just think it's an outrage. I mean, you know, this is a man who was responsible for tens of thousands of deaths in Chechnya. Uh, this is a man who is an author authoritarian in his manner of government. Uh, there is nothing close to democracy or equality about the way that he rules. He puts uh, businessmen and his political opponents in prison. So let's just, I mean, that's just a fact. And now he wants to lecture the United States and, and maybe more than lecture, contradict us on the fact that the use of chemical weapons was committed by the Assad regime without any evidence to that. The United States has evidence to the extent of where it was launched from, internal samples, all the rest. He has nothing, and yet he wants to make this case to the world. So to me, this has nothing to do with President Obama. I don't know why Charles wanted to go there, but it really has a lot to do with Putin I'd as of just you know, a reprehensible character. I'd be happy to explain, but I'll wait. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. Charles often goes there. I understand. You noticed that. I, that. I have John, noticed that. You know, in my view, every action has a reaction. And, and I wonder if this is a case where Putin finally overplayed his hand. Uh, you know, when you have Republicans and Democrats up on the Hill all reacting the same way, you know, maybe he pushed the United States a little bit closer uh, to some kind of military strike that the, the president seemed to be wiggling out of just, uh, just a day ago. Meanwhile, this 
conversation is continuing with Lavrov, the foreign minister of Russia, and John Kerry in Geneva. Um, this is John McCain, Senator John McCain's tweet about that, saying Lavrov again refuses to acknowledge Assad's responsibility for chemical weapons attacks. That's progress. Uh, Syria. And then we heard today from the head of the rebel group, General Idris. Take a listen to what he said about a call with Secretary Kerry. And he told me uh, if they uh, come to the conclusion that uh, they are wasting time, the uh, threat of uh, strikes is still on the table, uh, and uh, that. That uh, will be uh, an opportunity if they are lying uh, to do the strikes against the uh, regime in Damascus. We are uh, preparing our fighters, preparing ourselves for new offensive in all fronts in Syria. So General Idris saying, Kerry told him, basically, we're going to check this out, but these strikes may still happen. Look, one of the commanders of the army that Idris uh, commands, the Free Syrian Army, said, the revolution is dead, it was sold. And what he meant is that uh, the people all assumed until now that Assad would go, that uh, he'd be gone. And right now, everybody understands that what the Russians have succeeded in doing is to make him, is to give Assad a second lease on life, a kind of legitimacy and recognition he didn't have. I could just add one word on why it is about Obama. A month ago, Assad was a war criminal and Putin was a pariah for covering in the UN on the poison gas attack. And because of the uh, how flummoxed our president is, all the gaps all the, in, in which uh, Putin steps in, he's now, instead of a pariah, he's a statesman, he's a partner in peace, and he's in a position where he can lecture the United States of America. I just want to add this, since we're going down that road. Uh, you may remember back in the election, Governor Romney saying this to CNN, this is without, about Russia. Without our, uh, without question, our number one geopolitical foe, they fight for every cause for the world's worst actors. The idea that he has more flexibility in mind for Russia, he being President Obama, is very, very troubling indeed. And then Governor Romney was challenged about that at one of the debates. Russia, I indicated, is a geopolitical Russia does continue to battle us in the UN time and time again. I have clear eyes on this. I'm not going to wear rose-colored glasses when it comes to Russia or Mr. Putin, and I'm certainly not going to say to him, I'll give him more flexibility after the election. After the election, he'll get more backbone. I mean, on this day, when Putin's op-ed is in the New York Times, it's just interesting to listen back to that. Sure. I think uh, the president's response at the time was to say terrorism is the number one threat to the country right now, not uh, a diminished Soviet Union, no longer even the Soviet Union, now Russia. But I just wanted to come back to what I think is the heart of this today, which is Assad actually having a stronger stand uh, as a result of what's going on. I think uh, General Idris is exactly right in saying he needs to understand that the military threat continues. The Gulf states are angry at the United States, feel like they've been abandoned, that Iran has been threatened. I think we come back to where the vital interest is for the United States, that we have got to assert ourselves and protect our allies in Israel, Turkey, that might be victimized by chemical weapons.